All right, so as promised, I'm gonna show you how to make a little puzzle piece. And I might integrate this into a larger puzzle box after I show how I'm gonna make some of the other pieces. But this is a very simple lock. You got this side here, which would be the side you'll see. Uh, and then you got this back side, which you can kind of see in there. And how it's super simple operation. Now the way a puzzle piece like this can work so I can put a dial on the front with some symbols, numbers, letters, whatever. And somewhere else in the box, you got to find where those letters are, or figure out or decode something. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. But then you're going to simply like line those numbers or letters up. And when they line up, the little piece on the bottom will release. So you can separate something or open something or uh, make a lid release or a drawer come out. Uh, it's really up to your imagination what you want it to be able to do. But so to start off with, I'm going to show you how I designed this. Uh, to do that first, I gotta build a small wooden prototype. So let's jump into Lightburn. Okay, so you know how I just said we were gonna go into Lightburn? Yeah, I lied. First, we got to go into Fusion 360 because we need to make the locking arms, little arm bits that are going to uh, move and pivot and hold everything in place. Uh, so I start this out by making the piece that they have to lock onto. Now, when I make this, yeah, that looks wonky. That's not right. Uh, let's fix that. Um, I, I made this piece completely incorrectly. I gave it too much of an angle there. It really needed to have a 90 degree angle on it. Uh, and I didn't want to inundate you with too much stuff of this. So, yeah. I recorded the first bits, then all my revisions. I didn't do a screen capture on because I'm, I'm bad at this. And also, uh, you know, the Fusion 360 can be intimidating. I was very intimidated by it, but uh, I got into it. And I've only been playing with it for like two months, only to build puzzle pieces. And I, I found I like it. And once you learn how to do one little trick in it, you can just keep going, learn little by little. Uh, so here, when we're adding these pivot points, the pivot points do matter quite a bit. And I kind of just went with the ones I kept right off the bat because they worked. Uh, but depending on where your pivot point is, how long or close it is to your uh, end is going to de determine how far that piece actually moves. So... If you want to have it move really far, move that pivot point up closer to your uh, piece that's actually moving it, your little anchor piece on the top. Uh, if you want it to move less, move it further away. Uh, yeah, it makes a difference. And then here I'm trying to use the mirror function, uh, which you can see I screwed up on at least the first three times. I always screw that up. But yeah, once you get these done uh, and set the way you want them to, send that over to your 3D printer. Uh, if you got one, hopefully you got one. Because we're gonna need that for the, the next piece for designing this. Uh, the whole piece is based on these three pieces. This is the anchor to designing this lock bit. So now, like I told you at the beginning, now we're in Lightburn. Uh, I use this as a cheat. So after taking my measurements of the pieces after I 3D printed them, that's gonna give me the basis on the size of the box I'm going to want to uh, build for this. So as you see, uh, that box is outlined in like an orange color. That is already set to a profile to do a cut. Now these blue pieces I'm making are, uh, their frames inside of Lightburn. They won't be cut. So I use that as a tool to basically measure pieces. Uh, so I know the distance between them and how to make it so that when they come close, they reach the lock. So that gives me the spots on the corners where I need uh, the holes to hold them in place. And I'll do the same thing again here. Uh, make a larger one, a taller one. That is basically the same distance from between the two holes in the arms. And 
then since it's not going to pivot right there, I need to go out a little further to the center of the dial uh, that I'll be spinning it. And when I first made this, um, I was so close. I was so close. I ended up having to adjust this by literally like half a millimeter. And after I adjusted by half a millimeter, I had it working perfectly. Uh, but being able to make it in the little wood piece and cut it first helped out immensely because it, it saves time. Uh, I don't know why I did that. That was, that was just a little thing. Uh, so now we put it together. Um, yeah, little screws. I just have boxes of these things, these little tiny screws. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. It's a whole kit of like a thousand of them uh, and they come in handy. And I just use the same size for pretty much everything, uh, which makes it way easier because I already know the dimensions I need to put into uh, the CAD program to you know, do stuff to make it work right. But uh, yeah, so there. once they're all together, we make sure that our tolerances are correct, that everything's working, everything moves, nothing's interfering with each other, and it just works. Side note, I don't know what I'm doing. I just figure it out. All right, so there we have our piece we designed in Lightburn. Uh, fairly rudimentary, but it, it shows it works. A uh, little lock plate sits in there. I've designed something like this before, but it's only half of it. So it would be one that would slide in, lock, uh, and it's actually on a box I got out there. And instead of like one or two of these, it's got uh, eight of the locks on it. So in order to get the lid released, you got get all eighth into the right position for the top of the box lid to come up. Uh, but this works all by itself. You can put more than one on it. We can keep adding to it. We can have one on each side to lift up a, a whole section of a box or to open something. Um, but this as my proof, not proof of concept, it's basically how I'm laying out the sketch. So now when I jump into uh, Fusion 360, I will actually take this design that I made for this plate transfer it into Fusion 360 and use that as my basis, uh, my starting point for building the rest of it. So let's jump on into Fusion 360 and play with that a little bit and design the rest of the pieces. All right, so yeah, so what I did was I saved that file from Lightburn and I brought it right in here into Fusion 360, just did an extrusion on it and boom, I got my pieces. They're right there. It works. Um, honestly, I screw this up every time and it takes me so many times to get this just right. Uh, first, this is our starting point. This is giving us those plates with the exact same dimensions as the one we just did. Now, I wanted to recess the dials in a little bit on the backside so that way um, they just kind of had a slot to sit into. Uh, get that done. Uh, and then I tried this idea and you know what this idea was really stupid I was like oh I'm gonna make little pegs that just you know you can screw into and yeah this this was this was a waste of about 15 minutes of uh, me screwing around so I deleted that and I decided no let's just go with the full brim it'll be uh, just you know full size whole side uh, I think the reason why I was trying to do the little spot pieces the little round bits was to save on time and printing. And honestly, I don't think it would have saved on time. Uh, now here, when I do this top piece, this is kind of crucial. Uh, if you don't set it as a separate piece or a new component, it will combine the two pieces together. And I don't want to do that. I'm just laying that part on top so that way I can put these holes so I can screw it in there at the end. So it gives me a little, uh, so I can guide it. And I also need to look at the bottom side, find out where those holes are, because they have to go through the whole thing too, and figure out where they're at. And boom, uh, it, it works pretty easily. Now, as uh, you will notice, this plate on the back is different than the one I end up using in the end. 
uh, because it didn't it didn't work. It just it just yeah it didn't work. So once you get those all done, we will 3D print them, and then we will start making them. So yeah, I just use these screws and everything, glue everything in place, uh, make it all solid. So I put that in there. Then on the back side, it has that piece, the bigger round one that kind of holds it in. You can kind of see in the top where I made a wooden disc as well. I don't show myself gluing that to it. Get them on there, make sure they spin freely, spread out the CA glue so you don't get a big old nub of it and dry it. And let's get those arms on there. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing. I mean, why am I even telling you what I'm doing? It's right there. It's right in front of you. I just, you know, I'm trying to waste time here. And also, yeah, I don't know, you might find it interesting. You might also notice that the, uh, the linkage piece, one side is uh, got a little bit of a wider hole in than the other side does. Uh, because I wanted it to have a little extra space so that it won't, it would only unlock when it was in the right position. So I kind of made that spot a little bigger. So that way when you turn that dial, it uh, only gives it just enough space to move. And I put the uh, CA glue on the top of all the screw bits to kind of lock them in place because I found that by turning them, uh, eventually over time, they will, the nuts will back off and it can come apart. And I'm not tightening those nuts on there. They're just there to hold everything in place. Everything is not uh, screwed in tight, except for those sides. I hold that side plate on pretty tight. And then we'll get to see it. Get to see it work. Ooh. Works. All right, so there we have it. Showing you the complete process of making this. And as you might have seen inside of uh, Fusion 360, I had originally made a solid plate for the back of this, but it put too much pressure on the whole piece and it interfered with these bits here. So I had to modify it and I made it into more of a skeleton piece, which in hindsight might actually be better. Uh, so when someone opens the box, if you make this as something that's visible, it gives them a chance to see how it works, see the mechanism. I especially like that. I like to have watches that show the gears and everything working. So that gives you that availability. Um, I already have the next piece in mind and I don't know how these two pieces will work with this piece with the other piece I plan on making next. Uh, but the next piece is gonna use a lot of magnets. And I'm gonna throw a few parts into it to try to trick people. Um, so yeah, if you enjoy this, subscribe. Do hit that, that thing, do what all the other YouTubers tell you to do. I'm not big on that. I just like making stuff and I thought I'd show you how I make it. If you enjoy it, stick around. If you don't, it doesn't offend me. Till next time, I'm Ryan Duffy with Whiskey Tab Woodworks. And uh, these are puzzle pieces.